I pledge allegiance to my flag and the republic for which it stands, one nation, invisible, and the liberty and justice for all. This was the original Pledge of Allegiance in 1892. The words, my flag, was to represent the thousands of immigrants entering America at the time. Francis Bellamy wanted it to be known this was their flag. 20 years later, the flag of the United States was added. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to Early in the 1900s, saluting the flag looked different. Arms and fingers stretched way out in front of the chest, but it didn't last long. During World War II, the Nazi salute, it was changed. They changed the way you, so you just kept to keep your hand on the heart. For many in the U.S., saluting the flag and reciting the pledge was a daily occurrence in public schools. I was taught to put my hand over my heart when pledging allegiance to the flag. This is Beverly Henry. She was featured in a 2013 project called Undoing Time Pledge. Like Betsy Ross, I sew the American flag. I do my work at a pay rate of 65 cents per hour at one of the largest women's prisons in the United States. Beverly Henry worked in a flag factory while incarcerated in California. Many of her flags flew high above government facilities. Hi, it's, it's fine. How are you? Her story caught Sharon Daniels' attention, a professor at the University of California in Santa Cruz. Well, it, it was the way she was so eloquently able to compare, you know, and contrast um, the mythology around the figure of Betsy Ross, um, the promises of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness that the flag purportedly uh, symbolizes to the reality of her life as um, a black woman. As an African-American woman, as a lesbian, as a drug addict, as a woman who is HIV positive, I am a prime target, so to speak, in America. Uh, and I have a previous record that spans over 40 years. She still had a, a, a kind of patriotism. You know, she talked about um, how she encountered structural racism. She talked about how people need to be given a second chance. But her experience in this society had been, had fallen very far short of, of that symbolism and those goals. Our country, we Americans have sort of this unique feeling about the American flag. It's almost more than an object, right? Mark Leapson wrote the book on the American flag. Literally, it's called Flag in American Biography. He describes the feeling Americans have as a cult of the American flag. Think about it, the cult of the flag, this almost religious-like feeling that Americans have for the flag. And by the way, I didn't, I, I researched this very thoroughly when I started to write the book. I tried to find out if other countries had anything like this. And guess what? You know, I don't, I, there may be one other country around the world that has something like a pledge, but it's not mandatory and it's not like ours. This flag does represent that people can change and that everyone deserves a second chance. It's supposed to represent some of the things that Beverly talks about in, in the piece we did together, the, the you know, the, that everybody deserves a second chance, that, um, you know, freedom and justice for all, um, those kinds of things. And I think that there's this battle around that, who can, be included in the all, and who gets to determine the definitions of freedom and liberty and justice. And I stayed trapped in addiction at least 40 years, and heroin was my primary drug of choice. And she left prison, um, you know, after years of having really terrible health care in the prison system and doing this kind of hard labor and inadequate kinds of conditions that, you know, her body was really profoundly affected. And she passed away just a few years after she was uh, paroled. Beverly spent 42 years behind bars. As an adult, she only lived a few years as a free woman. But even at that, she was labeled a criminal. 
On September 11, 2001, the country gathered around the flag. From small handheld flags to balloons with the flag symbol, Americans came together to show their love and devotion for the country, the definition of patriotism. Today, that same flag is split. In an exclusive new NBCLX and YouGov poll, when asked how proud Americans were of the U.S. flag, 50% of those who identified as very liberal said they were not. On the other hand, those that identified as very conservative, 96% are very proud of the U.S. flag. Marcus Kemmelmeyer uh, is my name. Uh, I am a professor uh, of sociology and social psychology at the University of Nevada, Reno. For many people, in, in a time that, where the U.S. is fairly divided, um, um, this is also a symbol, symbol of defiance. It basically says, I'm not going to go away. I have a certain version of America uh, that I want to put this. And again, I don't have to say a word with it. Huh? But you understand the very fact that you notice it uh, uh, is already symbol enough that somebody is displaying. That. And they're not probably a, they're not a communist. They're not a socialist. They're, they're not kind of some kind of a bleeding heart lefty, that's not what you associate with that. You associate with a certain kind of patriotic ideology. Dr. Kim Meyer says the flag allows people to claim who they are and what they stand for without having to say a single word. The flag is a symbol and symbols speak. They basically say, they say, okay, you're just like me. That is, is actually an important source of belonging, huh? Because being part of something or somebody, uh, something worthwhile, often implies to I mean, people that there is a group that are not, uh, that you're not part of and that you don't want to be part of. One of the most interesting poll results was that those that identified as Democrats are nearly three times more likely to think of the Stars and Stripes as a symbol associated with the Democrats than Republicans, while Republicans are nine times more likely to think of it connected with the GOP. The, the trouble is actually with unconditional patriotism that it's never entirely uh, uh, unconditional, frankly. <laughs> uh, if, you're, if you heard all of a sudden uh, that uh, in the name of your country, huh, um, children were murdered deliberately, huh, no matter what your attachment was to your own country, that is bound to put a dent in it. Huh? Because you said, that's, how is that possible? This is not who we are. Huh? And that's also the key is the identification of the, the idea of what comes to mind when you say we. Huh? Because it's typically something that you yourself fashion. You might be unconditionally committed to precisely that thing that you think your nation is or should be. Huh? But it's not entirely clear that the next person over huh, has the very same thing in mind. The commitment to patriotism is predicated on the idea of what we think it is to be an American. And our personal relationship with our flag is our own. Gosh, I, I don't think about it. I think I don't think about it in a personal way. I guess I, I see it as something um, that allows for a discussion like this to happen. Because I fly a, a flag out of my pickup truck or on top of my car, does that mean I'm more patriotic than you are? I mean, look, I, I was drafted into the United States Army. I served in the Vietnam War. I don't have a flag on my car. If I had a pickup truck, I wouldn't put it on my on my truck. But I'm, I'm a patriotic American who served this country and put my life on the line in a war. So, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's really a matter of interpretation, and uh, I'll just leave it at that if that's okay. Who, who was it, Ralph Ellison, that said, I love my country, it's the only country I love, huh? Uh, but I, because of that, I have the right to criticize it, okay? Because you are part of it, because you are so much in, uh, uh, invested in improving it, in making it better, in, in making it all it can be. I view that not as a, the end of a journey, but sort of the beginning or the middle of a journey. In the end, patriotism is so complex, it allows us to openly have these discussions, the good, the bad, the right, and its wrongdoings. Being a good American patriot shouldn't mean one approves of its past, but rather it's a responsibility to make it better.
Hey everyone, Cody Broadway here. Thank you so much for taking the time to check out the NBCLX YouTube channel. Be sure to click here for more videos and also click here to subscribe to join the NBCLX community.